really sad when an adult passes away, but it's especially heartbreaking when a child dies, especially if they're killed suddenly. I'm here at the uh, Fox River Grove Algonquin Northwest Highway Railroad Crossing. And it was here on a fateful day back in 1995, on October 25th, that a Metro train was heading down from the north at a high rate of speed. And there was a bus with school kids on it from Cary Grove High School right here. You can see that the bus had stopped at this line and from this line to this rail is 30 feet. How do I know that? I measured it. And you're looking at a 45 foot long bus and with those front wheels at that line you are going to have about five feet of that bus sitting over the tracks well you got to figure the train is wider than the tracks a significant portion of that bus was here that train was coming at 70 miles an hour and the bus driver did not know sadly that uh, the light was red she parked here was waiting for the bus, uh, the light to turn green. The gate came down on the back of the bus and the kids were screaming, get the bus off the tracks. They had Janet Jackson playing loud music. This was a new bus driver. She didn't know the route. And in the mass of confusion, she was distracted looking back and the kids were screaming. She didn't know what was going on and the train smashed in at 59 miles an hour. The engineer, whose name was Ford Dotson Jr., he hit the brakes at 70, six seconds out, and he slowed, he got it slowed down at least 59 miles per hour, still very fast. And bus driver Patricia Kattenkamp didn't even know, along with the rest of the kids, what hit them. Seven kids died. Many, many injured. There were people across the street that witnessed it that came running. First 9-11 call came within three minutes. I think the police or the fire chief, one of the two, was actually here and witnessed it. They were thrown and strewn all over the place. This is a memorial for those uh, seven angels that passed away. Some of them died later in the hospital at Lutheran General and Good Shepherd. And the people did a valiant job. I see eight angels here and I am going to guess that one of the angels had a struggle getting to heaven, but finally got there. It's a beautiful memorial they made for the kids here so that no one would ever forget this tragic, tragic event. The consequences the NSTB issued 29 district recommendations to 17 district parties, including the, railway, the railroad, the highway, the Department of Transportation, the school districts, the bus companies. It was a watershed moment in our country for transportation. And let me tell you, it changed everything after this. This, this accident stands as the worst
Petra accident that's ever happened. And many changes were made. You can find all you want on the internet about the uh, what happened here, the gore, the it's what people want to talk about, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm not gonna go into the details. I want to focus on the kids. Who were they? What were they like? I know they're angels right now in heaven. We all know that. But let's focus on them and their memories. So we're going to go to the cemeteries. And we're going to say prayers and pay our respects to each and every one of these beautiful children. I wanted to mention that all the students were from Cary Grove High School. And uh, all but four of them on the bus had injuries. There were 35 kids on that bus. And uh, it was really amazing how the people in the community chipped in. Uh, they from toddlers to high schoolers, just a few days later, you know, it was Halloween and they all went out to get donations for the victims' families. They raised between $6,000 and $7,000 in the rain. Those poor kids and parents, I guess, were soaked to the bone. It was cold and rainy. Cary Grove High School Disaster Fund raised $50,000 and the JCs raised uh, $3,500. So it's just amazing to, uh, to see that. I met Shalom Memorial Park in Arlington Heights and we're walking to the grave of Michael Bennett Hoffman, affectionately known as Mike. He was a soccer player who always had an incredible sense of fairness. Mike was always watching out for other people's feelings. After soccer, he loved to play basketball like so many of the boys. I think he was on the team. It was his second sport, and the kids would always scream and cheer for him to score a basket. And the cheerleaders, uh, they would chant his name over and over really loud. I could just uh, imagine it. I have sons and we were at the game and I remember, I remember a memory like that. He, uh, he was athletic, Michael was. He swam for the uh, Cary Barracudas every summer. He, uh, a great neighborhood swim program for kids uh, that still goes on today. And he, he was quick to make friends. They said uh, he could make friends. He had friends from 80, 82 years old down to two years old. He was friends with everybody. He, uh, along with that, he had a deep appetite for learning and spirituality. And he went out of his way to explain his faith to his friends who were of other faiths. He was deeply religious. He was Jewish. And he was especially uh, excited, especially excited to participate in a United Synagogue Youth Leadership Program. His friend, his friend Steve Cueto said, he just said, we went crazy. We just had a lot of fun. 
He was a great guy, always making people laugh, and he was always uh, looking after us. I see Michael's grave right up here. Michael B. Hoffman, athletic, fun, and honest. Our beloved. There's a couple of stones here that look like they've been here a long time. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. It was noted that as either from his friends or maybe his parents, that he was bragging that he was going to the homecoming dance with a sophomore. I think Michael was a freshman, so <laughs> that's uh, it's, it's cute. After uh, Michael's death, his parents received his report card, and his grades were all good. Uh, Michael was a good boy. Michael, we hope you are resting in peace with the six other angels. We are at the Memory Gardens Cemetery in Arlington Heights, and we are looking for the grave of Tiffany Lynn Schneider. She was, uh, Tiffany was 15 years old when she passed away. She, her birthday was uh, just in August before Tiffany was very athletic. Uh, she was a volleyball player. She played on the 1994 St. Viator freshman team. Tiffany had a beautiful singing voice and she also liked to write poems. A couple of stories about Tiffany told from her grandfather. One story, uh, she got a job at McDonald's. That was her first job. And on her very first day of work, he was the one who took her there. And he said she got the job. She was hired on the spot because of her outgoing personality, her magnetism, her energy. Uh, she was a ball of energy from everything I've read, I can tell you that. And uh, it was right down the street, I think. I think it was at McDonald's right, uh, right down the street here where, it, uh, where the accident happened. And sad, she just got her, she just got her first paycheck when, uh, when that happened. This is Tiffany's grave. Tiffany Lynn Schneider, our kind, beautiful angel. And there is an angel there. A uh, pumpkin left over from Halloween. And I'm sure we're going to see uh, some Christmas ornaments and decorations here soon. A lot of people do that. And I know Tiffany's not forgotten. Um, I'll tell you a story about Tiffany that just really touched me. That uh, it was just a few weeks before that uh, her grandpa, she was at her grandpa's house and she knew the history that grandpa was in World War II, grandpa was a Marine. 
and uh, she wanted to see his uniform and he took his uniform out and she actually put it on she was so excited she was so into the history so into uh, what her grandpa did and uh, she had her picture taken with that uniform on so she uh, she was into uh, she was obviously into history and I think she was an old soul she really just connected to uh, you know, mature for her age, for sure. And I'm sure destined to do amazing things. Tiffany was uh, Jeff Clark's friend, another one of the victims who we will be visiting uh, next. And uh, sadly, she was found on the floor of the bus. Uh, and she died later at Good Shepherd Hospital. Barrington. So, Tiffany, we uh, pray for you and we hope you are resting in peace with the six other angels. I'm at the Wind Ridge Memorial Park and Nature Sanctuary here in Cary, Illinois, and this is pretty close to where the train bus accident happened. Uh, this is a uh, beautiful cemetery. I don't think I've ever seen a cemetery that uh, is as beautiful as this. It's truly an arboretum. Got a lake, uh, all kinds of rolling hills. I, I couldn't think of a, a more beautiful place for loved ones. We are here to uh, see the other five students that were killed on that fateful day of October 25th, 1995. It's a very serene setting here. And uh, I know about where Suzanne's marker is. She has a beautiful bronze plaque. There's uh, everything here, everybody is uh, entombed into nature. You'll see a lot of rocks used as grave markers, like uh, that one over there. And you can see it, a lot of attention has been paid to uh, har in harmony with nature. And they've really given you, there's a lot of footpaths. It's just a lot of thinking went into this. This cemetery was owned by a family and it was their uh, summer retreat many, many years ago. And uh, they donated it. I don't know what year, but and they are buried here. I'd highly recommend anyone that's anywhere near Cary, Illinois to come here and just um, walk and experience this. So let's talk about Suzanne. Suzanne's brother was on the bus too, Raphael. He was 14. He survived the crash. He was, uh, took him two weeks to recover in the hospital. He had to go through extensive physical therapy after that. I don't know if he ever fully recovered. Susie was very giving and compassionate. She cared deeply about her family and uh, others. She really cared about everybody. It's a beautiful pond up there and uh, it feeds down this lovely waterfall. Susie's, Susie's right up there. Susie wanted to become a lawyer when she graduated and she, it was really coupled with her compassion for people, especially people that didn't have wealth. 
and she wanted to uh, basically practice law and uh, help you know help people in need here's uh, here is her marker this is a beautiful bronze uh, sadly there's a tire mark and somebody can't believe this somebody drove somebody drove right across this thing come on Uh, but anyway, Susie Guzman, October 6th, 1977 to October 26th, 1995. She just made it to her birthday by just a, uh, less than a month. It's a beautiful little poem here. Our family chain is broken and nothing seems the same. But as God calls us, one by one, the chain will link again. That is beautiful. Uh, there's a big prayer. A lot of beautiful words here for Susie. I'll tell you a funny story about Susie. She. I mean, it's not funny, it's, it's more just memorable and it's positive that uh, she, the, the night before this happened, the night before Susie died, she was really excited um, about this lecture report she gave in front of the students. And when she was finished, all the students applauded, stood up and applauded, and she's so excited about it. And she was keeping her mom up all night. And mom, mom had to work the next day really early. She's like, I got to go to bed. And Susie was just too excited, just wanted to talk about it all night. So if there's any solaces, Susie uh, was so happy up until the day she passed, uh, especially at those, that, last, uh, that last evening. Susanna died at Lutheran General Hospital. Susie, we, uh, we hope you are resting in peace. We're going to uh, go now to the graves of the last four, and they're together at this beautiful place right up here in the woods, this little patch of trees. The first grave we'll visit will be that of Sean Robinson. Sean is right over here and his marker's on a boulder. It's very beautiful. There is a, a plant here and also a little sign that says, love you. Let's see if we can't fix this. It's supported by the rocks. That's better. Sean Robinson, you can see there's a basketball for him. Sean was an athlete, and Sean, although he played basketball, his first love was track. And Sean actually started a track team. He actually started it, and uh, it was growing. And uh, his dad always said later he wished he could have seen it. He, uh, he also described Sean as an uncle feeding his baby niece, a teenage boy playing video games with his friends, an upstanding son, just a good boy. A grade school classmate wrote, she was a new girl, it was on her first day, and he adopted her. So he was always looking out for, uh, for kids, for people. Sean's dad, Rick, regretted that he didn't get a chance to tell Sean how much he loved him and how proud he was of him. 
the last thing he said to Sean was, don't forget to look after the dog. But Sean knew his dad was proud of him. He knew his dad loved him. This family was extremely close. Thereafter, the family took care of Sean's dog. Guys, that was 25 years ago, so you have to know that the dog is, uh, is now with Sean. Sean, I uh, hope you are resting in peace. Next to Sean here, past this tree, is Jeffrey. Jeffrey James Clark. Jeffrey also has the same uh, little blackboard saying I love you with the smiley face. You can see there is an Eagle Scout plaque, which is Jeffrey's legacy. He was a proud Eagle Scout. Uh, they say that he had a list he had to make his list for the ceremony when he got to be Eagle Scout. And uh, they, uh, they say that he made a list of 20 people and they were all family. How cool is that? It was scouting and his family that he held most dear, but he was also a sports buff and he loved the outdoors. He loved to go camping and he'd read any books or watch any TV program that had to do with anything anything outdoors, big outdoors. And you know those Eagle Scouts, you know those Boy Scouts there, that was in his blood, the camping and all of that. Sadly, Jeff had just uh, gotten his driver's license before the, the tragedy and he, uh, he was on the bus anyway. There was a woman named Helen Gretchel she was a nurse and she was across the street at a cafe when this uh, event happened and she ran out and it was her destiny to help uh, to help Jeff. They say that uh, she literally had a turkey baster trying to clear his airway. But sadly, Jeffrey died in her lap right there at the scene. Jeffrey, I hope uh, we hope you're resting in peace. There's a bush up here with Christmas ornaments. Guys, this is such a beautiful place. I can't begin to tell you. This is the resting place of Joseph Calty. You can see here, forever in our hearts, it says, and you see the two stereo speakers on each side. I'll tell you about that. And uh, there's a little skateboard. A little boy. Got Christmas lights. It's early December right now. Christmas coming up, guys. So uh, I see there's a note on here also from his sister, who he was very protective of little Stephanie it says uh, dear Joey I love and miss you you are my brother forever I miss your pretty blue eyes I will always remember us going to the pumpkin farm I will always love you your little sister Stephanie Stubbs I guess Stubbs was her nickname well Joe Joe was uh, he was an active guy he was uh, pretty mischievous, as I understand in reading. And uh, he worked, actually he was really, really into loud music, rap music. He worked at Modular Auto Systems in Barrington. It was a work-study program. And uh, he also obviously loved cars. He loved fast cars. So uh, Joe was a sophomore and uh, you know, a poignant story, he, uh, Joe told one of the freshmen, John Anferson, that he wasn't old enough to sit in the back of the bus, and he was nice about it. He was like a big brother. He's like, hey, some, hey man, someday, uh, 
someday, buddy. But uh, it was kind of fate that uh, John survived because he wasn't sitting in the back of the bus. And the reason he wasn't sitting in the back of the bus was because of Joseph. Such an irony that John escaped with only minor injuries. At the funeral, the priest, Reverend Robert Baker, said of Joseph in the eulogy, he said, if Joseph could have, he would have turned his car into one huge sound system. You know, it was ironic that uh, Joe had car trouble that day, and that's, that's the only reason he was on the bus. They called him Joe Beef, and uh, I have to tell you, when I heard that, it really affected me. It really, I kind of froze when I heard his, I don't know if it's true, it was on Find a Grave, it said Joe Beef, nickname. But for me, it's just everything kind of froze still at that moment, because it really brought it to reality that, that this is so permanent. Like, you know, I was thinking of that name and like he's there, like, where is he? Uh, but he's gone forever. We'll never see him again until possibly the afterlife. To the right of Joseph is our last child that we're going to visit, and that's Stephanie. Stephanie Lynn Fulham. Fulham. You see a peace sign there. Uh, there's a little doggy here. Let's talk about Stephanie. Stephanie had a lot of talents, starting with acting. She was in the school play. She also liked to be colorful and different. One of her friends, Patrick Roll, 15, he wrote a poem about her in the paper. I, when I was doing the research, I saw, and he mentioned uh, Stephanie's outrageous green lipstick. Debbie Owens, uh, her mom, keeps the memories of her daughter, the irreplaceable things in a cedar chest at the foot of her bed. Some of her high school artwork, a t-shirt from the 90s rock concert, flowers tied with a pink ribbon from Stephanie's funeral, old VHS tapes. It's a wonder to hear her voice from those tapes. I mean, it was like a gift, her screaming, oh, I got what I wanted, said her mom. But she's haunted by a drawing Stephanie sketched about a week before she died. It was a pastel of a set of weeping eyes. Of course, my thought was, she said, did she know? Did she have a feeling? I hope that's not the case. Her mom doesn't open the chest much anymore. Uh, it must bring back too many painful memories. Stephanie died at Lutheran General Hospital. So Stephanie, we hope you are resting in peace along with the others, with Joseph here and Sean and everybody. Um, yes, it is uh, too painful. I can tell you firsthand. There's a big hawk right up here right above me. It is um, a life sentence, guys. When you lose a child, it, it's, you, you get wiser, you get more perspective of life. You have the memories, but time does not heal. I'm sorry to say. But the solace that I take, and I'm very philosophical about this, is that I believe that our our lives, and this is true, I, it's not what I believe, it's, you know, on the scale of the universe, our lives are just, just a snapshot, a flicker. And as such, the most important thing is that you've lived a good life and a full life. And I think these kids, I think these kids did, I mean, they didn't live a full life in all the things they could have experienced, but 
the days they were here, they lived full with lots of love for friends and family. So we're, only, we're all only here a flicker. So that's the only solace I can offer. It's what I think about, it's my opinion. But all I can say is uh, such a, a beautiful place for these uh, angels. And I can only hope that they are in heaven. Rest in peace, kids. Rest in peace.